Hello everyone. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day this is for you. This is Oak Ridge First Cumberland Presbyterian's virtual Sunday school class. And like I say every week, it's not so Sunday Sunday school. So it doesn't have to be a Sunday when you watch it. It's not going to be a Sunday when I record it. In fact, today is Saturday for me. Uh, we have been looking at the Ten Commandments this series and we are on commandment number six. And as a reminder, the Ten Commandments is um, ways that God has emphasized to us his relationship, our relationship to him and our relationship to other people. So we'll be studying the sixth commandment, you shall not murder. And we'll also be looking at scripture in Samuel, when future, and which is 200 years about after the commandments were given, where future King David has a chance to kill the current king, Saul, but chooses not to do that, even though Saul was actively seeking to murder him. So we'll discuss that and how it might be relevant for us today. But before we begin, I'd like to say a prayer that God would open up our hearts and minds to understand and know what he would like us to learn today. Dear Lord, thank you for the precious gift of life. We ask that you make us aware of what lessons you would like us to learn today and how we can apply that in our lives to glorify you. Amen. Okay, so each week I have a PowerPoint and we talk about that. And let's see. Okay, so this is the title, Oak Ridge's Virtual Sunday School Class. And my name, of course, is Patricia Pace. And there is my email. We are taking our lessons from Lifeway Bible Studies for Life. And this is a personal study guide cover. If you would like a copy of the week's guide, just email me, send me a shout out at church or text message, and I'll be glad to email that to you, usually on a Monday before the Sunday of the virtual lesson. And it follows the same theme and the same scripture, but the actual lesson that I do on a Sunday deviates a little bit for that. I put in my own flavor, uh, but so by looking at both of them, you could probably have a deeper meaning and some further thoughts and reflections on your own. But you can also just watch the PowerPoint and be perfectly fine. So this week's lesson, the point is to respect human life as God does. And our scripture is Exodus 2013 and also 1 Samuel 26, 7 through 11, 22 to 25. So what are some ways that you show others that they are valued. Think about that. What are some ways that you show others that they're valued? Last week, we talked about honoring your parents and we talked about ways that you could honor them. The same goes for other relationships and other humans, spending time with them, doing things they like to do, providing service for someone. Those are ways that you can show someone that they're valued, listening to them. What are ways that you show others they're valued? So what value does the world put on humans? And that's kind of interesting. How much money is a life worth? And that is pretty much up for debate. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. And that is something that people have discussed back and forth. You have your healthcare people, you have your economists, and they're trying to weigh the balance between protecting the economy, saving the economy, but also saving human lives. So is there a need to weigh that? So in ordinary times, we might look at things like life insurance or governmental regulations, but in a pandemic, this is definitely a discussion. At what cost to humans do we do to save we have to save the economy. So thinking about that. So I did, I mean, I guess I knew this, but I didn't put much thought into it, but the government definitely has, has put different values, monetary values on the life of humans. And in his book, uh, The Economist Hour, Applebaum, who is a writer for the New York Times, he documents how the economic value of life has been influenced by regulatory decisions since the 70s. And in 1972, someone from the Nixon administration task force put the value of a human life as 2.5 million. And so that has changed over time 
with different political tides. And now the estimate is even, well, it varies based on which regulatory body you look at, but now they look at 8.7 million as the value of a human life. But you have also the Environmental Protection Agency says 7.4 and the Department of Transportation says 9.6. Uh, how much do you pay for life insurance? What's the payout on that? What's the value of a human life on your life insurance? And so at least we get super excited that we're worth $9.6 million. Um, in her article, how much are the elements in your body worth? This is from Thought Company. Anne-Marie Helmstein says, and this is from January of 2020, so it's pretty up to date. If you break down the elements of your body, so we're 65% oxygen, 18 carbon, 10 hydrogen, 3 ni nitrogen, 1.5 calcium, and these are percentages, 1% phosphorus, and then we go down to less than 1% of potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, magnesium, iron, and iodine, and all kinds of little trace elements. So the going rate, dun da da for all of these elements in your body is a dollar. But if you wanted to sell for parts to bump up the price or the value, uh, if you're looking to make a buck with your body, uh, you could sell your individual organs. So your skin would be worth about $3.50 if it were sold at the price of a cowhide, which runs about 25 cents per square foot. If you take a dollar's worth of the elements plus the value of your skin, you might get a total of $4.50 which if you're like me, you could round up to $5. So you could feel just a little bit better about your chemical value. So that's, that's kind of a little bit uh, fun on that. But we really need to think about not what is our value to the world, to science, but what is our value to God? And one of my most favorite Christian singers, artists is Lauren Daigle. She has got some fabulous, fabulous songs. And one of her songs, You Say, really hits home about this, about our value to God. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I'm falling short. And when I don't belong, you say I'm yours. So some powerful words about our value to God compared to our value of what we think of ourselves or what the world says we are. So our first scripture, Exodus 2013, you shall not murder. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, so how does God assess a human life? In Genesis 1, he affirms that the worth of every human being in Genesis 1. So, I think everybody acknowledges the value of human life, but we don't necessarily always agree of what that means or what it includes. And our culture is pretty divided. Um, but God values all human life. He makes no exceptions. And through this, he expects us to value life as he does. And he's called us to live a life of love. So what are some ways that our society devalues human life? Well, these are some popular ones, uh, are not popular, however you want to say, anti-popular. Um, obviously, Black Lives Matter is something that we, we have been seeing quite a bit lately. Abortion, choosing life, human trafficking. And then you could look at other things like uh, elderly euthanasia. But others may not deem that life is valuable and it can be reflected in these things, in discrimination and in racism and murder and, and abortion or human trafficking. But human life is precious to God and it should be precious to us. So we discussed last time, the first four, three commandments were about God's relationship with us. And then the rest are going to be in the latter section about our relationships to one another. 
in the Hebrew language possesses two ways of expressing a negative command, depending on um, whether it's mild or strong. And the Lord employed the form noting the strong prohibition when he issued the sixth commandment, you shall not murder. And the specific Hebrew verb translated murder refers to putting to death wrongly for selfish reasons. So it's not noting putting to death with an authorization as in the administration of justice in Israel or killing in divine ordered holy war. So in the Old Testament, the Lord delegated to his covenant community, Israel, the right to take a human life by his command, either through capital punishment laws or through his instructions regarding holy war. But no individual Israelite possessed the right to on his own, act on his own and decide in another person's life. So the concepts of premeditation and deliberateness lie at the heart of this verb murder in this commandment. And really the sin of murder uh, has been violating sacred, the sacredness of human life from the beginning of time. You have Cain and Abel. And then after the flood and the covenant that God made with Noah, he prohibited murder in Genesis 9, 1 through 6. So also, if you look at this, we moving to the New Testament, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught that murder begins with anger and hatred in the heart. So read these verses from Matthew. So from this, we are not to destroy human life through hate or defamation. Murder is a, starts in the heart. So lasting truths from scripture, Exodus 20, 13, we need to value human life because God values it. We need to value human life because God created every person in his image. We are not to destroy another's life through hate or defamation. And we need to value human life because the scriptures teach that human life is sacred. Okay, moving on to 1 Samuel 26, 7 through 11. If you'll read this to yourself. Okay, so God alone has the authority to bring death and to give life. That's in from Deuteronomy 32, 39. But acknowledging his authority over life is one way that we can show respect for it. This is what David did on more than one occasion. We're just going to look at one here. And though David has been chosen by God and anointed as the new king of Israel, King Saul, he didn't accept that so much. And so he's willing, he willfully tried to eliminate David because he was a threat to his dynasty. And so David really was on the run for Saul for several years. And so we see this instance where he does have this chance to go ahead and take care of Saul, put it, get him out of the way, but he chooses not to. Uh, he spares his life out of respect for, the, for Saul being the Lord's anointed at that time because he realizes that his time to become king would become would be in the Lord's timing. And so he refuses to seize the throne violently. So it's a determination to leave vengeance where vengeance belongs in the Lord's hand. But he has his uh, relative, I think it was his nephew, maybe. Anyway, it's a, it's a yeah, his nephew. Uh, and I think I'm saying this right, Abishai. Uh, and Abishai, he's, he's just saying, come on, let's destroy him. Uh, he goes, I don't even need to hit him twice. I can get him with one. But uh, 
it kind of makes me think today about today, how even we can be, we can have good people around us, people that are on our side and maybe not giving us the best advice uh, like this. And so how do we avoid poor advice, even from godly people? And I, I mean, in my lifetime, I've had friends and I always, I, uh, pretty talkative. And with my friends, we like to discuss out our problems and I like to listen to how they might suggest that we could solve them or I could solve them and vice versa. Um, but even with friends who are godly, we still have to go back to the scripture, to what the Lord's commands are to make sure everything we do is aligned with that. And so David, even though this was perfect opportunity and he was being encouraged he chose to leave vengeance to the Lord and wait because he knew it wasn't the Lord's timing. So lasting truths in 1 Samuel 26, 7 through 11, we respect life by refusing to take advantage of others when we have the upper hand. And he did have the advantage over Saul there. He wasn't very protected. He was asleep. We respect life by leaving vengeance in the Lord's hand. And we respect life by acknowledging God's authority over it. So the last set of scripture, Samuel, 1 Samuel 26, 22 to 25, uh, go ahead and read that to yourself. And I've highlighted in red some words about life and value. Okay, so even though Saul has acted repeatedly as David's enemy, David continues to value the king's life. And so looking as, at his expression, um, I consider your life valuable, as I think I have highlighted, as your life was valued much in this day, uh, David expressed a desire to receive uh, and recompensate in kind for sparing Saul's life. So he says, as your life was valued in this day, in my eyes, let my life be valued much in the eyes of the Lord. So he didn't really respect, uh, expect reward or deliverance to come from Saul, but he's saying he would like, may the Lord consider his life valuable and rescue him from trouble. So even though he had opportunity on more than one occasion, to kill Saul, he refused to do so. And so as followers of Christ, God expects us, expects us to live faithfully before him. So going back to the Sermon on the Mount, uh, it takes it to a deeper level. So this application of thou shalt not murder, it goes deeper to encompass wrongful anger that could lead to literal murder. Or Jesus also includes cutting or hurtful words that could kill or destroy another person's spirit. And I can think of many times where words have been so powerful that it really can uh, bring someone down. So God or Christ has instructed us to value every aspect of another person's well-being and to treat them in keeping with how he values us. And so in doing that, we honor life. So it's not just physical murder, but emotional or spiritual murder, murder that we have to keep in, keep in mind. And we know John Wooden, a uh, famous coach, uh, basketball coach, he, this is a quote from him. Don't tell me what you're going to do. Show me. It's great to think ahead and look around for ways to add value to others, but nothing beats actually doing something for another person. So we'll get into that about practical ways we can value others. So lasting truths in 1 Samuel 26 through 22 through 25. Respect life by refusing to return evil for evil. We respect life by leaving vindication to the Lord. We respect life by treating life as equally valuable. Every life is equally valuable. We respect life by valuing every aspect of others' well-being. Insults, injury, 
our words. So going back to John Wooden's quote, um, look around for ways to add value to others, but nothing actually beats doing something for another person. So what are some practical ways that we can add value, that we can lift up the value of life before others? So um, Mission Hills Church on their website, uh, they have some ways of practical ways to value others. And they say one, offer encouragement. Two, smile and take time to ask, how are you? Three, give the benefit of the doubt. Don't assume, ask yourself, do I know this for sure? Don't assume that everyone has ill intent towards you. Four, give of your resources. Five, ask questions and listen well. Six, offer to help. Seven, be honest. Eight, serve without being asked. Nine, invite. Inviting others reveals that you value them enough to think about them and create space for them in your life. And 10, be patient. So God wants us to become the kind of self-sacrificing people that don't need this rule to love and value others. So we need to kind of identify any unhelpful habits that devalue others that we might have in our life and replace them with habits and practices that help us become the kind of people that God designed us to be. And um, I found this on the Ministry Council of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church and Sheila Amara. This is a, I believe it was a call to worship, um, but we can have it as an ending, ending to worship. And I will read it out loud as our prayer. And then I have a little story to tell. Lord, we confess that oppression and injustice sometimes overwhelm us. It is easy to believe that we cannot make a difference. We do not always hear the cries of those who are vulnerable. Often our choices and the things we buy contribute to the destruction of life. Forgive us for the times we allow our fears to lead us to silence and inaction. Strengthen us so that we may be the voice for those who have no voice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so valuing human life as God values. And I found this story, um, it's a fable, but I'm gonna kind of try to retell it. A young boy goes to his father and he asks him, dad, what is the value of my life? And the father gives him a stone. And he says, I don't want you to actually sell this stone, but I want you to go to the gardener. I want you to go to the museum and I want you to go to the jewelry store. And I want you to ask them how much will you give me for this stone? Although I don't want you to sell the stone, just hold up the number two. So the boy goes out to the gardener and he says, what will you give me for this stone? And he holds up the number two. And the gardener says, well, I'll give you $2 for this stone. So the young boy knows he's not supposed to sell it and he tells him no, so he goes to the museum and he asks the curator, what will you give me for this stone? And the curator looks over it and he says, well, I'll give you $2,000. Well, the boy was pretty excited for $2,000, but he didn't sell it because his dad told him not to. Then he goes to the jewelry store and he asks the jeweler to look at it. And he asks him, what will you give me? What is the value of this stone? He holds up the number two. Well, the jeweler looks over it and he looks and he, gets his little eyeglass and he looks at that and he says, I will give you $200,000. Well, that was very hard to turn down, but the boy said no and he ran back to his dad and he said, dad, dad, I was offered $200,000 for this stone. I was offered $2,000 for this stone. I was offered $2 for this stone. And so the father says, well, what do you think? What is the value of your life? And the little boy said, well, I don't know. And so the father says, well, it depends on where you put your value in your identity. 
it could be worth two dollars, two hundred thousand, or two hundred thousand. But if we put our identity in God, we are priceless because He values us because we are marked, we are created in His image, and so we don't put our value in what others see because that will be different depending on their experience and how they see us. But God's value is timeless and is solid and it is priceless. So you guys have a great week and we will continue on with the 10 commandments. God bless.